So I'm sure at this point most people, at least men, know who Lana Rhodes is. She entered the adult film industry in 2017 when she was only 21 years old and quickly rose to the number one adult film star in the world with classics like What Are You Doing Step Brother and Sis Gets Stuck in the Dryer. Seriously though, her popularity grew at a light speed pace and she could be described as having overnight fame. Hi, my name's Lana Rhodes. I'm 19 years old and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Quickly, she was the person many celebrities and athletes alike wanted to get with. Despite all of this newfound attention she was receiving, few knew that while she was making all these films like a modern Scorsese, she was married to this dude named John for five years. Yes, I'm serious. You know that type of relationship is not for the faint of heart. She met this man when she was only 17 years old, working at a restaurant called The Tilted Kilt, which is like a Hooters type of restaurant, only the waitresses are wearing what is essentially a schoolgirl's outfit. Tilted Kilt, a kilt was the entry point to like objectifying yourself for a living. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Way to go. I did, I Once she turned 18 and it became legal, she started performing at a strip joint. Wow. I used to like, to get like my first pair of like stripper shoes, I like found like guys on Craigslist that lived in like different states. I'd like pick out stripper shoes that I wanted and they'd send them to me and then like I'd send the pictures of, like my feet in them and I was like 16. So I got like my first pair of stripper shoes and I went to the strip club. What are stripper shoes? Like, he um, like, like heels? Like the clear like shoes. Oh, like the okay. big heels, yeah. And she even claims when she was a kid that she already knew she wanted to be some sort of adult performer. You always knew that that was something that you were interested in? Sort of. Like I mean I watched like The Girls Next Door like a Playboy and like Anna Nicole Smith and stuff and mm. I sort of just like felt like oh they're so pretty and they have all this nice stuff like I want to be like them I didn't realize oh I'm wearing this outfit and guys are like looking at me sexually like I was sort of really dumb and naive at like 17 18 19 so this is just the first example of this woman acting naive to avoid personal accountability there's no way at 17 years old someone couldn't understand the concept that creepy men go into these places to gawk at and flirt with women. They get a little attention, the woman gets the money. It's a very transactional event for everyone involved, just like everything else this woman ended up doing in her career. And while she was still performing in these films, putting up triple-double numbers every single night, she was winning awards, she was making connections, and overall you would think that she would be happy, living what was essentially the life of a wealthy influencer. But deep down she felt disgusting, as most of the things she was doing on set of these films were beyond degrading. Basically, this guy had a bowl and he like gagged me until I threw up into it. And then he like picked the bowl and during the scene he asked me to drink it. This wouldn't be the first instance of Lana putting money over her own personal pride. But to truly understand the Lana Rose story in its entirety, you have to go all the way back to her adolescence, where she describes herself as a troubled teenager who fell into what was basically a criminal cult when she was only 15 years old. She claims that this gang of what she says were hippies forced her into the adult entertainment industry, and that they would take all of the money she had earned, and that by the time she was only 16 years old, she had already been to prison for assisting these people in home burglary. When she recalls this moment in her life, she once again fails to take accountability for her actions. He kind of like <gasps> get on like his shoulders and like climb over after the counter was closed. And you would steal cigarettes? <laughs> yeah, and I didn't even smoke. Like literally, like I was so f***ing nice. Holy shit. And that eventually led to you being the small person that got put through windows to rob houses at one point, right? Is that what it was? I never talked about this oh. on camera, Mike. Right? Well, so I went to prison for like a year from like 16 to 17. And like you I- You were the lookout of this well, they armed sort of, robbery. <laughs> they Clan of hippies. <laughs> Like, nah, I didn't help them. I just drove the getaway car. I just enabled the crime to happen. And you guys know theft like this happens all the time, everywhere, even online. In fact, every single day, your personal data is likely being sold behind your back on the web. There are thousands of data brokers harvesting personal information and selling it to unknown businesses to be used however they please. Data companies often have access to some of, if not all, of the following information. And you guys don't want that. But the good news is, with a sponsor, 
sponsor of today's video, Incogni, you can ensure you are safe when browsing online. Basically what the homies over at Incogni do is take your personal data off this market by reaching out to these data brokers on your behalf and getting it removed. With Incogni, you can say goodbye to spam calls, spam mail, targeted ads, data breaches that big companies incur daily, and of course strangers getting intimate information like your phone number or even your home address. All you have to do is create an account, tell Incogni you'd like them to remove your data, grant them the right to work on your behalf, and then you just sit back and watch while they swat away all these slimy data brokers from selling your personal information. And luckily for you guys, the first 100 people to sign up using my code Jamari will get 20% off Incogni. So don't wait, protect yourself today. And so by the time Lana Rhodes was 22 years old, only one year after making all these films, she decided to leave the adult industry once and for all, which is not exactly an uncommon thing to see in this line of work as a Gret can be damn near instantaneous with uploading said videos. Keep in mind, during this eight month period that she was active, she made over 250 films. Like damn, she had more work ethic than 2002 Kobe Bryant. After this, she started dating Logan Paul's left nut, and this made the two of them much, much more famous, and opened up more revenue streams for herself, as she blew up on OnlyFans and Instagram, and even had a podcast for a little while there. You can make a million dollars post in just a couple days on OnlyFans. Legit a million? Yeah. All while this guy Mike was also using her for content and clout at every turn, harvesting millions of views off of this relationship. It always just felt weird to me to have a breakup video. And here I am making a breakup video. So that went on for a while. And then when the two of them finally parted, that's when things really started to get a little more scammy and hypocritical for this woman who was already filthy rich compared to the reality for most people in this world. First off, she scammed the shit out of her audience with an NFT rug pull during the height of the crypto and NFT mania, where people were shelling out loads of cash for digital images. Hello, CryptoSys community. First of all, I want to thank all of you for being part of my very first NFT project. The premise of her products was to buy these JPEG NFTs that were somehow going to be tied to her career. And these magical NFTs will just increase in value over time as she gains more popularity. She says, quote, the brand plus value will keep growing with every drop. So her fans thought this was going to be some kind of long term investment, I guess. And of course, it wasn't. If you look at her roadmap, it was pretty clear things were promised that weren't delivered on. This was something many rappers and athletes alike were doing at the time, and they marketed it like you were betting on the person's career to continue to prosper. And fans of whatever influencer or athlete really ate this up. A dude even got a tattoo of one of these CryptoSys NFTs. I mean, what an absolute clown. It's apparent that these parasocial relationships between influencers, quote unquote, and their fans, are going way too far. Like, can you imagine being the dude who did this tattoo trying to hold back your laughter? Either way, she promoted these NFTs and pulled the rug on her fans in less than 24 hours as the value went like a roller coaster from all the way up to all the way back down. While she allegedly made over $1.5 million, with her excuse being that it all got to be too much for her to handle. But you know, I'm still gonna run off with all this money. And she somehow got away with this, walking the streets freely after committing what's basically fraud. And it really just goes to show me how gullible people are, and willing to take a chance on their favorite influencer person, who in turn will completely screw them over feeling no remorse. And so that was just another instance where she put her pride and her reputation kind of on the back burner just for the sake of money. And now with this latest entry into her life, she has had a child. And let's take a second just to think about how tough it's going to be for this poor kid at school. I'm not even going to show him, but I think considering the line of work she is involved in, she should be much more careful with how she shows off her son. And the thing with her son is that apparently she's always talking about how she is essentially a single mother because the father could apparently care less about this poor kid. Because he's not involved whatsoever. So, the father. Yeah, he's not involved whatsoever. Zero. Zero. Like money, nothing. Nothing. Oh. No money, I'm not seeing Milo, anything. But Lana definitely makes sure to let people know that she had a kid with an NBA player, which has led to much speculation involving Kevin Durant and Blake Griffin. Also, don't have kids with NBA players. That's another one. <laughs> <laughs> and all I can really think is that his identity should have really been kept private. And at this point, it seems like he is used more as a tool for garnishing attention than anything else. It really is just crazy to me the decisions we all have to make in life. And this should really all go as a lesson to the impressionable youth 
that this influencer lifestyle crap is really not all it's cracked up to be. I know it's like the main thing kids want to be nowadays is like a TikToker or maybe even a YouTuber. And why you kids might think you want someone's life because they're famous and they're rich and they can afford anything they want. They get to meet all these other celebrities. They get to do all these things that you consider to be cool. Typically underneath all of that, there's a lot of sad stuff going on in the background. And with the instance of Lana Rhodes' life, it's really no exception. Personally, I do think that a lot of it goes all the way back to not ever being able to take any accountability in your own life. Because when you can't personally take accountability and you feel like you're never in the wrong, I feel like you can never really grow as a person. But I really do want to know where do you guys think her career will go from here? I do want to thank you guys for watching and subscribing today, dropping a like on the video. I also want to send a thank you to Incogni for sponsoring this video. But as you guys know, it's Benny Boy the Tan Superman and some other sad lives of modern day influencers out here need to be covered. So I'm out. Peace.